Welcome to Pocket Grass 2020. My name is Mr. Joe, and I'm going to teach you a song with a recipe and a dance move. How about that? And it has to do with corn. This is our theme. Where would we be without corn? My golly, popcorn at the movies and corn chips, dipping them into guacamole, and it goes on and on and on. Well, there's also a really great dish that is actually turns into a bread. And you can do it different ways, but the one I'm going to talk about is the one that you make in a black skillet. So here I am in my kitchen at my house with my family. Got all the fixings, got the tools, got a stove, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to teach you this song that I wrote for you with the dance move and a little bit of recipe advice and celebrating cornbread. Cornbread. Everybody loves it. Everybody eats it. Let's do it. You got your sheet in front of you there? Grab on and let's play together. I like cornbread, like soup and chili. Making cornbread with Sally and Willie. How do you make it? I got a recipe. A skillet, some fixings, a little chemistry. Shake around to the left. Shake around to the right. Hold up a warm slice and take a little bite. Winter grass jam right on top. Dance to the cornbread buggy and don't ever stop. We're doing the cornbread buggy. A little sack of cornmeal, a little bit of grease. Need an oven in your mom, wear an apron if you please. Pinch of salt. Don't forget the butter, bacon powder, baking soda, and a little bit of flour. Shake around to the left. Shake around to the right. Hold up a warm slice and take a little bite. Winter grass jam right on top. Dance to the cornbread buggy. Don't ever stop. We're doing the cornbread buggy. Make it savory. No matter which way, it's always a treat. Serve it with a hot bowl of anything you want. Cornbread gets along with anything you got. Shake around to the left. Shake around to the right. Hold up a warm slice and take a little bite. Winter grass jam right on top. Dance to the cornbread buggy and don't ever stop. We're doing Shock of the cornbread, here we go. Southeast, West, you just can't beat it. Feed it to your family, feed it to your friends, feed it to your neighbors and they'll come back again. Shake around to the left, shake around to the right. Hold up a warm slice and take a little bite. Winter grass jam right on top. Dance to the cornbread bug and don't ever stop. Well, do it. I love cornbread. All right, I want to show you real quick, slow down a little bit, this melody of this little tune we're going to play called Shuckin' the Cornbread. Now, it really comes from an old banjo number called Shuckin' the Corn, but uh, we can play it on anything we want, really. So it's got a little, little different 
touch than the original, but that's because we've got a new title. We're not just shucking the corn, we're shucking the cornbread. Never really tried to do that before, but... the A part. We're going to go to the B part and it's basically, it's a G major chord. Repeat it. Okay, we'll see ya. Can't wait to hang out with ya. Pocket Grants 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, Okay, Wintergrass Youth Academy. I'm Charmaine, and this is Charlie, and uh, together we are Squirrel Butter, and we're here to help you learn some dance steps. So I'm going to teach you some very simple dance steps that will get you started in flat footing, and flat footing is a great, awesome way to do solo dancing at home. You don't need a partner, and so it's perfect for the quarantine. It's just a way to move your body and also be really musical with your body by making percussive sounds. So we're going to start with a very simple marching step. We're literally going to march in place. So go ahead and do that along with me. We're being very deliberate about the placement of our feet so we get a nice rhythm. Nice, that looks good. Just keep marching along, get a feel for it. While you're marching, try to kind of relax your upper body. Have a good posture, stand up straight. See if you can smile and remember to breathe and try to remember those things anytime we're doing dancing. Okay, second step we're gonna learn is called a chug step. This one's also really easy, and it's called a chug step because it's kind of reminiscent of a train. We're gonna chug by pushing our weight forward into our knees. We kind of bend down like this, bending our knees, letting our feet slide forward, and then we lift up. So we're gonna chug back and forth. Nice. And I'll turn to the side so you can see what my feet are doing. I'm letting them slide just a little bit. This is where slippy shoes can help a lot. That's our chug step. So same thing, I'm gonna to try to kind of relax my upper body when this is happening. Breathe and stay in rhythm. Nice. Then the third step we're gonna learn for this first lesson is a combination of the two. So like the marching step, we're gonna step but we're gonna step with a bent knee so that we can lift up like we were doing in the chug. So it's a bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, straighten. So this is called the buck step. And this is the third step that we're learning today. Bend, straight, bend, straight, bend, straight, bend, straight. And I almost think of lifting, bend, lift, bend, lift. And the trick is to keep your weight on that leg while it's straightening. Nice. Bend straight, bend straight, bend straight, bend straight. I'm talking about my knees here. Your knees, your feet will follow your knees. That's the magic. Okay, I think we're ready to try it with a song. So Charlie's gonna play a slow tune so we can practice. We're gonna do eight counts of each step in rotation. We'll do three rotations. So follow me, here we go. Marching step and three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chugs, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Buck step, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back to marching. Five, six, seven, eight. Chug. Five, six, seven, eight. Buck step. March one more time. Five, six, seven, eight. Chug. Five, six, seven, eight. Buck step. And five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Good job. Now we're going to do that same song. We're going to bring it up to speed. And I should mention that this song fits with our cornbread theme. This song is called Cornbread and Butter Beans. And Charlie's going to sing a little bit of it for us while we do this next one. So I'm going to cue you less and try to count in your head and count along with the, the song. Do, do, oh. Five, six. first flat footing lesson. Good job. Hi guys, Professor Tom with your History Minute. Episode one, cornbread. You could say that cornbread is as American as apple pie, but you'd have it backwards. Indigenous peoples cultivated this native grain, maize, for thousands of years. It's one of the three sisters, along with beans and squash, the original crop rotation that met everyone's nutritional needs. Native Americans ground dried maize and made either flat cakes or a mush. The Native Americans shared maize with Europeans to help keep the new arrivals alive in the 15 and 1600s. The Latinx population expanding across the Great Southwest made tortillas their staple. Europeans called maize corn, a generic term for grain. By the 1700s, Euro-Americans, in addition to tortillas and mush, were making dry corn cakes that were like hockey pucks, the better to save and eat later, just add water. These Shawnee cakes or journey cakes were the original road food. Johnny cake. They also made cornbread. Over the years, cornbread was an essential side dish and regional variations crept into the recipe. In New England and Canada, cornbread was sweetened with maple sugar. In the South, it was sweetened with molasses. In the Southwest, there were savory versions with peppers. Enslaved African Americans in the South were forced to make good cornbread with eggs and milk for the plantation owners, while they themselves were only left with the ground up husks, cobs, and a little grain and water for their own meals. One of the oldest American songs is Juba, well known among African Americans as far back as the early 1700s. It's usually thought of as the song to do the ham bone to, but if you check the lyrics, it's really a protest song about how enslaved people couldn't get the ingredients to make themselves good cornbread. After the Civil War and the Liberation, good cornbread became culturally, symbolically important among African Americans. In the 20th century, industrial baked, store-bought wheat bread elbowed cornbread off the daily meal plan, but that just made cornbread even more special. It's what we Americans still make for ourselves, especially when we're cooking for our family, friends, and neighbors. We get out the family recipe or we open up a, a cookbook and get just the right mix to go with a reunion, a church, dinner, or a music festival.
Hey kids, glad to see you here at the Wintergrass Youth Academy Club. We're all virtual now and you get to learn some new tunes. I'm Erin, this is a cello, and we're going to learn a cool tune called Table Dance. It's uh, from Denmark and I learned it at a really cool Scandi Jam in Sisters, Oregon at the Fika Coffee Shop. We are in the key of G, so I'm going to play through the tune once and then I'll break it down for you and you can play along and learn too. Here we go. <laughs> If you notice, there's a bunch of arpeggios and chord things happening on the B part, and we'll get into that to, in a second. But let's start off with the A part. Starts off with three Ds and a little kind of skippy thing. So there's that little skippy thing, and then we're going to add a scale. But let's do the skippy thing first. So three Ds, D, 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 and then a B, D, C. That's low two for fiddles and second finger for cellos. A, F sharp, and G. So that little skippy part. Do that with me. One more time. So from the beginning we got D, 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 B, B, C, A, F sharp, G. One more time. Then we're gonna add a what's that? It's a scale. G A B C. So let's put that together. We got D D D. Locking up. Yeah. So let's do that again. Ready and go now. Let's do that over and over a couple times. Here we go. Again. One more time. So great. So now we add a little uh, shift. So cellos, we're going to go up to G, which is your fourth finger. We're going to fourth position. And fiddles, find your G on the E string. <laughs> And then we don't have the scale at the end, and that's the second half of the A part. So we go D, G, D, B, D, C, A, G, F sharp, G, D, G, D, B, D, C, A, F sharp, G. So let's put it all together. Let's loop that A part. Here we go. Part. We have this little kind of we can walk down or just start on D. 
is the downbeat of the B part, but you can also walk down to it. So here's the chord stuff that I was talking about. We have a D dominant. G, D, G. So that's D, G, D, G, D, G. Then there was D and then G. Okay, so let's go over the notes. We have a D uh, arpeggio. So it's D, F sharp, A, F sharp. Third finger for cellos, high two for fiddles. And then we have D, G, B, D, which is a G chord, even though we're still starting on a D. So that's an inversion. Woo! Yeah, chords. D, G. Let's do that again. D, G. One more time. D, G. And then here's our real big D dominant because we have a C natural in it. Ooh, A, C, A, F sharp. And then last but not least, G, B, D. What chord is that? Yeah, G. G. So let's put that together. D, G, D dominant, G. So let's play it together, the whole thing, and then I'm going to add a couple little um, uh, harmony things. Chords are pretty self-explanatory. We got G's and D's. So um, I'm going to play through it once, and then I'm going to play a harmony part. So you guys keep playing the melody or try to figure out the harmony part too. And there's lots of options for harmony parts. So my the one that I'm going to play is just an idea and just an example. All right, here we go, table dance. there so really we should start on it A there B. or or we can uh, play quarter notes options for the harmony part and that's something that you guys can all explore with and have fun and yeah keep making music everybody see you later